ਦੇ ਦਿਲ ਪਰਦੇਸੀ ਨੂੰ ਤੈਨ ਨਿਤ ਦਾ ਰੋਣਾ ਪੈ ਜਾਊਗਾ ਨਾਲ ਰੰਜੇ ਤੇ ਜੋਗੀ ਦੇ ਤੈਨੂੰ ਜੋਗਣ ਹੋਣਾ ਪੈ ਜਾਊਗਾ Welcome to Frax Check, your weekly Frax Vibe Check. We'll be going straight to the source of truth by checking the chain. Capital K is under the weather, so I, DeFi Dave, will be leading the show today. But I'm joined by, of course, by our producer extraordinaire, Sam. Before we jump in, please subscribe to Flywheel. It really does help. And please follow Flywheel DeFi on Twitter and Telegram. How was that? How was That's that? great. <laughs> Kit, I channeled your spirit for this one. Okay. I should... <laughs> anyway. I thought you're going to I thought you're going to go for like the low one like Hello and welcome to Fracture. Uh, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this week. We call this week the Finding Our Footing week. As the name suggests, this week we're finding our footing after the great depegging of 23. Do you hold ETH but don't know what to do with it? Want to earn those juicy liquid staking derivative yields but don't know where to start? Well, Frax ETH is there for you. Frax ETH is Frax's native LSD solution, allowing you to earn boosted yields in multiple ways on your ETH. If you want to get started, go to app.frax.finance and turn your ETH into Frax ETH today. Frax stablecoin. We see the supply has been holding steady at a billion dollars ish. unchanged from last week even after everything that has happened next we must check the peg let's go check the peg it has gotten as low as 0.991 with a high point of a dollar 0.002 for the week things wow. are super rocky we we then looked at curve swapping via 100 million frax for usdc and uh we got a exchange rate of 0.9989 this exchange rate isn't bad we got as high as 0.994 at one point and move but you know what let's move on to our collateralization percentage well, hold on so the usdc is still having like still wobbling a little bit more than it was before we haven't gotten it, back to like uh i guess that's why it's called finding our footing sam <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> all right collateralization percent we got a uh, we're still holding steady you know it's 92% right. holding steady unchanged and also uh holding steady for our, our decentralization percentage ratio at 23.9%. Finding our footing, that's all I got to say. And so, let's go to the next slide. For this week, we saw the Frax BP TVL drop to 487.3 million, which is 1.3% lower from last week. On the right side, we look at the volume traded and for context, in February we hit 49.3 million and in March we hit 210 million. We gained 16 million over last week. This represents a 43% utilization rate. The stablecoin trading volume has been ridiculously profitable for Curve this month for reasons that we obviously <laughs> <laughs> for reasons for reasons. Uh, next slide. Oh yeah. All right. All yeah. right. My favorite well, it's do you see it? it's St still in the lead. So it's at 114%, but is the slide messed up or is it just me? Yeah, hold on a second. Let me uh let me fix this. Let's let me fix this. I got to take it out and there we go. There we go. There we go. This week now we march to my favorite section. It's actually both Kit's and mine's favorite favorite section of Frax check. We are at we are at 114% of the three pool. We decreased 4% over last week. We're still above 100% though. We love to see it. The Frax base pool is 487 million versus the three pools 425 million dollars. Uh let's go to the next slide and show that to the people. There we go. You know, hmm. but what's concerning is that the Frax BP dropped 6 million dollars and the three pool gained 6 million dollars. Hmm. Now It wasn't easy to get to the top, but now we must stay at the top. You know what you know what they say, you come at the king, you best not miss. <laughs> It's true. It's yeah. true. 
Next slide. Let's go to now actually my favorite segment. Oh, this is my favorite slide. <laughs> I thought that was FPI. No, no, no. This is this is our up only. The up only. We have our Frax ETH segment. We start by checking Frax ETH supply as always, but it's up only as always. The count is at 125,803. Uh, that's 3.9% up week after week. It's not too shabby, but you know, we like to see 5% week after week. So, you know, we got to get those numbers up a bit. Now let's look at where the frac seats are hanging out though. As a reminder, you can take your frac seat into the S frac seat vault and earn the sweet native ETH staking yield, which is the print, which is printing a nice 6.4%. And the vault we see that 62% of all frax ETH is just chilling and stacking ETH nicely in the native staking yield vault of S frax ETH. The other place where you can earn some nice frax ETH yield is in the curve pool for the frax ETH ETH pool, where you can where you can join 30% of the frax ETH supply, uh, 30%, yeah, 30% of the frax ETH supply. Come join the party over there. I'm there. I'm chilling. It's fun, you know. <laughs> the remaining 8% is floating in the ether somewhere, no pun intended. We think the yield parity between s ETH and the curve pool is reflected in the current split. Unless Frax cranks up the bribes a bit more, we think no, we'll no, see no. it. This, this, one was, this one was caused by the, remember it spiked to like 11%? Yeah. I think, I think a lot of money yeah. came, came back. So like everybody that was like on different chains or like- It was reflexive. It was reflexive. Everybody just like wanted that 11%. Yeah. Yeah. And then it just came back in. But you know what that means? You should crank up those bribes and phone incentives. <laughs> so we see, you know, a bit more balance into the balance return to the force. But enough talk about the supply and yield. Let's get down to the peg. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Peg is solid at 0.9992. And let's check the market. We tried to swap 3,500 frax ETH, which is roughly the amount of the largest frax ETH holder. Uh, and we got an exchange rate of 0.9976. Not too bad considering we got as low as 0.995 two weeks ago. But we don't like to see a number seven there, you know. These are similar, they're similar assets, so the exchange should remain above, you know, 0.998. That's what we like to see. Fortunately, the TVL... It's quite sticky at 121 million. Solid nine figures. We love to see it. So far, so good. But let's see how we stack up against the other competitors. Next slide, please. Doing good. Doing 26. good. Doing good. We like to see it. Here we have a layout of the LSD market landscape. We have Lido in the lead with 74.5% of the market. Though Frax remained the highest 30-day delta in the group. At a solid 22.2% so far. It's my favorite number. Frax Eats market share is at 1.6% gain and 0.05% over the last week. Let's keep fighting the good fight, fellas. On the yield landscape, Frax Eats pretty much dominates with 6.4%. And the closest competitor is stick, stake-wise this week at 4.8%. Seems like yields are down all around. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I, it's we're still creeping up though. I mean, twenty percent thirty day change is is great. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Next slide. So you know, on the, on there we go, six point four percent. There you see it. That's still um, great. You know, we like to see. Yeah. Next slide. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, wait. Now we got a new section act uh, added. Another one of Frax's products that might not get as much love as the other products is FPI, although it has been in the conversation today with Coinbase requesting a flat coin. So that was interesting. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? It's hard. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's hard. Like, I feel like the only stable coins that can exist right now are dollar stable coins or ETH stable coins because those are the only stable coins with demand. I know, but like, do you think that Frax should answer the call and go build on base. Yeah, I think Frax should build everywhere that there's demand. I mean, Frax, is, Frax has been multi-chain since birth, so yeah. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if uh, Coinbase, if we built on on base, if they would list Frax. <laughs> I wonder what's stopping them. I don't know. It's honestly, it's the lack of a market maker. Like I, I've been in this situation. I pushed really oh, yeah. like when. 
Yeah, when I was at OKCoin, it pushed really hard to get Frax. Like every time I'd see the listing, like our listings guy, I'd be like, "Hey, like, can you look at Frax? It's great. Like, we should list it. We should list it." And he was like, "There's nobody to market make it. Like, so we have to go out and buy it. We have to go buy the token, and then we have to use that. Uh, we then have to give it to a market maker to then go like trade on our exchange. It's just hard for people to do, right? Um, and so that's why we don't see very many places on." Um, uh, centralized exchanges like frac share kind of makes sense right because you can like coinbase can buy all the frac shares at once and then and then just use like create a a 3x short or something so it can it can hedge out the the mm -hmm. delta risk right but um and now it has the 20x perpetuals right so that's you know there's just there's just things that can happen where people people need to scoop up fracs and frac shares first before it can get listed mm -hmm. yeah I understood in this section we're talking about FPI though. I know. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, this is my transition back to this, the script. <laughs> <laughs> Quick refresher, everyone. FPI is the Frax Price Index, which is a stable coin that tracks inflation. This is the first product of its kind on chain. Let's run through the numbers though. So far, we have 82.3 million supply of FPI. Current inflation reading is 6%, and the FPI peg is above at 0.37% of its peg. And you're wondering how it maintains its peg to inflation. Well, that's what our, the treasury is for. For the record, FPI's treasury is 88.3 million. And similar to how the AMOs work for Frax's stablecoin treasury, the FPI's treasury is made up of FPI, Frax, and a small percentage of holding of FXS. As you can see, 95% of the treasury is in the FPI Frax convex pool. All these assets are put to work just like in the AMO, to earn that needed yield to keep FPI at the inflation peg. These assets are managed to produce $4.3 million above the amount needed to maintain the FPI at the peg. Therefore, we have what we like to call equity, quote unquote, for the VE FPIS of 4.3%. I mean, 4.3 4 million. Now let's move on. Uh, just to, And just to shout out a, uh, the article that we wrote yesterday, Mm -hmm. um, I wrote an opinion piece about uh, FPI for for Kathy Wood. So um, goes into what FPI is trying to do and why it's such an important product that Frax needs to build. Um, and yeah, like one of the things that I think FPI does really well, it's one of the few Frax products that we can do this with right now, um, just because of its uh, easier complexity uh, at mm -hmm. the moment is just being able to see the balance sheet in real time where we can see every single FPI, where it's at and... Um, uh, like where, like exactly how much all of our assets and liabilities are. Um, and then we can calculate the equity on a, on a block by block basis. Um, so that's really cool. Go read yeah. that article. Yeah. <laughs> Go down below, subscribe. Exactly. We'll have it below. We'll have it below. Next slide, please. All right. Next up, we have my other favorite section, Fraxland. Uh, we remain pretty flat here at a, uh, $143 million in TVL with $37 million in borrowed FRAX. The utilization rate increased by 11%, up to 66% from a week ago. From the two charts, we see that the supply value of FRAX just took a nosedive alongside with the collateral value, but both saw a nice bump and now flattening. I guess catching on footing here too. <laughs> we pretty much hit the reset on both of these values and started near the beginning of FRAXland again. Currently, there are many pairs being offered on Fraxland, but more are, and more are to be added soon. Uh, can we have the next slide? Yeah, sure. There we go. Also, look at the current highest supply APY. We have none other than SFRAX ETH FRAX. But note, this is the V2 and we're migrating to VT, V3. Then right behind it is our GM FRAX pair at 8.8%. .8 a little, little further down the list, there's the CRV Frax pool with a juicy 7.1% APY. And some new pairs you may see there are our friends at Maker and our friends at Ape. So we got those things down too. So Diplomatic pair. Yes, yeah, so just for anybody wondering like why we like the 164% is there. Um, that pool's been sunsetted. And so uh, you can't actually deposit Frax into it for someone to borrow. So people keep on pulling all the Frax out. And the unlucky people who are there and still have their stake frax ETH there are getting 
just walloped <laughs> with fees uh, because pull it out. Like, please, there's there's a half million dollars worth of steak frax ETH there, and you're you're paying almost like half percent a day uh, to remain in that. So yeah, like, I wish it, I was like frax. I wish I was deposited in there, just making one hundred sixty four percent. I know it's crazy, isn't it? I think the it's it's not. I don't think it's okay. I think that maybe the AMO should go back and start moving funds in there until I I don't know. Maybe that's the way to get people out of the pool, but it just seems like too high of an interest rate to allow. Yeah, that's yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it's an insane interest rate. But anyways, let's go to the next slide. Mm-hmm. Now the last part of the stablecoin maximalist creed, the Dex, aka FraxSwap. Per DeFi Llama, the TVL is $66 million with $149 million in monthly volume from March so far. We just took the monthly volume divided by the TVL to get a utilization rate of 225%. Finally, next slide, please. Let's jump to the uh, profitability section, starting with an overview of the AMO holdings. We are up. We are on our march back to a dollar eight cents. The grand total of all AMOs is at $916 million. We experienced a 0.5% decrease over the last week. The curve AMO is at $623 million. Liquidity AMO is at $72 million. Lending, $85 million. And investor, $131 million. It's going to take quite some time to regain all these assets into the treasury from the shakeout from USDC. But Flywheel DeFi will be here every week reporting on every step of the journey. Next slide, please. Is that it? Oh, there we go. Look at the revenues. Oh, look, revenues. There we go. There we go. um, On to the profitability of the Convex AMO. For the month of March, we have $143 million of revenue and 106 million. No, 1.43 million dollars in revenue and 1.6 million in bribe expense which means we are at a loss for 180k for march we believe we may we believe we may end the month very close to being flat we will report back next week with the final count and if you want to make sure you stick around for that uh make sure you hit that bell button because we come back every week with this make sure you subscribe too at Flywheel DeFi. Um, Are there any more slides? I'm not missing anything, right? No, that's the last one. That's it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll close out. I'll keep closing out. Uh, If you like what we're doing here at Flywheel DeFi, please leave a comment below. Give us a like. Share it with your friends. Share it with your DJs. Share it with your DeFi vets, your TradFi vets, whoever. Share this all all around. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Flywheel DeFi. Join us on Telegram at Flywheel DeFi. Follow me on Twitter at DeFiDave22. And I'm at traders underscore insight. And we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Everything said on this episode is not financial or tax advice. This channel is strictly for educational purposes and is not in investment advice or solicitation to buy or sell any assets or to make any financial decisions. This video is not tax advice whatsoever. Please talk to your accountant and do your own research.